Hello and welcome to the Circle WC Ranch and the Wilson Combat Channel, where we hope you'll subscribe. A lot of our viewers have asked, what does it take to get one of these to one of these, to take an ordinary 1911 pistol and make it a truly great 1911 pistol? We're going to ask the source, Mr. 1911 himself, Bill Wilson. Bill? Welcome, Assad. Glad to have you back again. Always good to be here. Good deal. Good deal. All right. If we're going to start with a box stock, this happens to be a, a Colt Series 70 here, box stock 1911, and we want to basically make it what I would call combat ready, self-defense ready. There's a few key modifications that I highly recommend. Uh, number one, I mean, the gun has to work. So the first thing I would do, I would check out the extractor tension, see if the, see if the feed ramp and barrel throat need a little polish and stuff like that. So. First thing is, is to make sure the gun's gonna function reliable. That's always the most important thing, okay? Uh, number two, uh, obviously gotta have some decent sights if you're gonna be able to hit what you're shooting at. You know, a lot of the newer guns now come with a little better sights, but this Series 70, as you can see here, doesn't have much in the way of set of sights that us old guys can see. Yeah, it's kind of 1920s vintage 1911A1. Yeah, so we wanna go with some High visibility sights. Uh, I prefer a fixed sight for a carry gun. I think you do. You do too. Uh, so that's number two. Okay. So now we got a gun that works. We got some some sights that we can aim the gun well with. So now we need to make the gun a little easier to shoot. And the best thing to do there is to get a little better trigger pull on it. A nice crisp trigger pull enables you to shoot a gun much easier and faster and more accurate than a heavy you know, creepy trigger. Those three things are kind of the, you know, that's the must do's in my, in my opinion. So now we're up to the, okay, what, what else would be nice to do? Uh, I prefer an extended thumb safety. You know, when I draw the gun, I want to have a thumb safety big enough that I'm not going to miss it, flip the safety off. So that's going to be my next best option is to, is to put an extended thumb safety on it. And just as important to on safe too. Yes. Oh, yeah. Much easier to put it on safety as well as taking it off. And next would be, for me, I prefer a beaver tail grip safety. You know, it, I mean, it, it really increases the comfort of shooting it, especially in 45 compared to the old original tank, you know, tank type safety that can kind of be, you know, this area here can be digging into your web of your hand pretty good. That would be my next, next go to. And really to round the whole thing out then, I'd bevel a magwell, you know, instead of having a square bottom magwell, I'd bevel a magwell so uh, it's a little, a little easier to, to insert a magazine. And so what, what I've just described here is, you know, when Wilson Combat started, we, we weren't a gun manufacturer like we are now. We, we took guns like this that customers sent into us and we customized them into guns like this. I remember that. And so one of the very first models that we did when we started in business I say we, it was pretty much just me. Uh, we did what we called a 110 basic package. And what I've just described to you, that was our 110 basic package. We made the gun work, we put good sights on it, put an extended thumb safety on it, and uh, did the bevel on it. You know, that was pre-beaver tail. You know, we didn't have the beaver tails back then. But with the exclusion of the beaver tail, that's what I basically described was our 110 basic package from the, you know, the late 70s. So. That's, that's, that's the basics there. And if, you know, if, you, if you've got a gun that's set up like that, uh, from there on, I recommend you spend your money on ammunition, not more work on the gun. You know, see what you can do with that gun, you know, by putting a lot of rounds down range. And then you'll, you won't have to ask us from then on. You'll learn on your own, okay, well, I wish I had this, this, and this, you know, but. Oh, well, Bill, the you know, when you look at the economy you were talking about and how much you invest in the gun for the performance, how do we get from ordinary 1911 accuracy to the one inch at 25 yard accuracy that you're getting here and still keep that legendary reliability? Well, the most important thing to, to getting one of these things to shoot is obviously the bore quality. You gotta have a, you gotta have a barrel that's got a, a very high quality bore in it. And then you gotta get the barrel to where it locks up the same every time the gun closes. You know, it's nice to have a real tight slide to frame fit, but that, that contributes very minimally to handheld accuracy. 
you know, it, will, it, it can have a negative effect if you're shooting at a ransom risk. But if your hand held where you're aiming with the slide, with the sights, you know, a little bit of looseness in the slide to frame really doesn't have much to do with accuracy. So as long as your barrel lock is quality, it locks up good at the top, locks up good at the bottom, locks up good at the bushing there, you're gonna get good accuracy. Once you've made the investment in a, a gun like that, how often do you suggest it be uh, cleaned and lubricated and inspected for maximum performance? How often do I recommend or how often I do it? <laughs> I'm not big on gun. I'm not big on gun maintenance. As long as long as you keep them wet, they'll still run. Is what I found. You know, they don't have to be clean. Um, and I've got a good friend, uh, Jerry Barbo, and I mean, he is just a fanatic. He, he thinks if he shoots the gun 20 rounds, he's got to fully strip it and clean it. You know, and it's like, God, you, you need to get a life, Jerry. But he is retired. So, um, but anyway, no. To answer your question, uh, I would say if, if you're if you're actually shooting it. Uh, you need to at least do a relube job about every 200 rounds. Of course, that obviously depends on the kind of lube you use. What lubricant do you recommend, Bill? Uh, it depends on the, the gun and the temperature and all that stuff. If, 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 if it's not bitter cold and I'm shooting at 45, uh, I like a light grease because it stays put, you know, and it doesn't uh, migrate and, and all that. If you're shooting a, a 1911 five inch, nine millimeter, for example, in cold weather, you want to use something extremely light, you know, like a one of our real light oils, something like that. You can't put a very heavy viscosity lube in it if you're going to shoot a gun that, you know, needs about all of its energy to work in the first place under under conditions of cold weather, you know, which makes it even that much worse. Wilson Combat is famous for the quality of their magazines. What does a listener need to know about selecting magazines for a 1911 for total reliability? Um, only by Chip McCormick and Wilson Combat. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, gang, there you have it. Uh, you're looking at two icons, one human, one made out of blue steel. He's the guy who really popularized turning this into this. And today you can buy this, the Wilson Combat over the counter. If you try one, I think you'll be as pleased with them as all the rest of us who use them are. Be sure to keep an eye on the Wilson Combat channel, and again, we urge you to subscribe. And don't forget, feel free to enter your thoughts in the comments page. We'll see you next time.